Hello everyone. I welcome you all to this lecture. In this lecture, we are going to start our experiment number eight. That is based on the inter-process communication. So in inter-process communication, there are multiple ways to establish the communication. We consider if there are, let's say, two processes, P1 and P2. And P1 want to share some data with P2 process. There has to be some, some medium or some channel or some way so that a process P1 can share the data with P2. And once a process is able to share the data with other process, we consider the communication between P1 and P2 process has been established. Right? So the very well-known way to establish the communication between two processes is pipe. There are two types of pipes. So the very first type of pipe is unnamed pipe. As the term suggests, unnamed like there will not be any specific name, but the pipe will be working and creating in the background. So we can write one end of the pipe and from another end, the another process can read the content which has been written. So let me demonstrate you actually uh, what is unnamed and named pipe. Generally, we create the named pipe uh, with the help of mk fifo command so if i demonstrate you with the help of command that is mk fifo in an mk fifo command you specify a name and with that name a pipe file will be created pipe is also kind of uh, a file you can consider so if you want to create a named pipe you can use mk fifo and let's say i give the name as pipe any name we can give. So when I create it, if I type ls minus l, you check it, a pipe is created, a name is pipe, and here in ls minus l, the very first character is p. I hope it is visible. So that this very first character is kept, this is p. p means it is a pipe file. Okay. And pipe generally used to establish the inter-process communication. In such a scenario when both the processes are running or residing on the same computer right so how we can use such kind of pipe let's say i want to store the output of one of the command let's say i run ls or ls minus l command and this output i want to store inside the pipe okay this pipe we use to establish the communication and generally we use to establish unidirectional communication okay so in pipe there are two ends from one end a process can write from another end another process can read it so we consider pipes we use or we can utilize to establish one way communication right so if i am writing the output of ls minus l on to this pipe now this ls minus l is writing we need another process which can read the same pipe so let's say i am open another tab and in this particular tab let's say i start reading from that so i use let's say wc command or maybe cat command any any command we can use so if i start reading that that contain so let's say i am using cat command and in that cat command i am using pipe file Okay. Now, if I hit enter, it will get the data of the ls command. So, I hope you are getting the use. Here, what I did is, I type this ls and the output of ls is not displaying here. This output I have written on this pipe. And in another tab, I start reading the content of pipe and I am getting the output of ls. Okay. So, this pipe is the named pipe which i have created with the help of mk fifo right now let's in this session i'm going to demonstrate you how to create unnamed pipe by using pipe system call so there is a system call called pipe which we utilize or use to create unnamed pipe unnamed pipe means no specific name need to be given 
So in unnamed pipe, uh, it is defined. This pipe function is defined in unistd.h, and in case you want to call it, you need to pass an array, integer array of two element, and these two element or integer element will be attached with two file descriptors. So there will be two descriptors. So descriptor zero and descriptor one you can consider, and these descriptor will be utilized for reading and writing purpose only. Pipe. Okay, so let's look at the code and then I will elaborate to you. So, okay, so let me open. okay so this is the code let's say you check it now in this what i have given here i have created an integer array named as pipe fd why i am giving this name because i want to store the file descriptor which we are going to utilize okay so there are two file descriptor we require one file descriptor will be considered as input end another file descriptor will be considered as output end or you can say read end or write end okay now buffer size you can take anything because uh, once we read the data as i have demonstrated from the pipe file the output of ls i have written on the pipe and another end i was reading so when i read i need buffer when i write i need some some character array so for that matter you can take some array of 25 or 100 or whatever as per your need then i have declared a pid underscore t type variable that is pid because i am going to create two processes with the help of fog so one will become the parent process another will become the child process okay and i'll try to write data by let's say parent process will write on the pipe and child process will start reading from the other end okay so let's look at here the very first thing I am checking here for the error. So I am calling the pipe and inside the pipe I am passing that array, pipe fd array. In case this pipe function works fine, both the file descriptor will be initialized. Okay. So this pipe fd will have two values associated to it after a successful execution of pipe function. In case it does not execute successfully, then it will return minus 1. Okay. So I am checking error here. And I believe this, this code will not execute because pi will be created successfully. And then here, I am calling fog and creating another process. Okay. So I am comparing the PID which has been written by this fog. If this PID is less than 0, that means there is an error. Fog doesn't work fine. So I have written here some message like fog failed. And then if fog works fine, then there will be two processes. One the already executing process that is the parent and another is newly created process that is child. So if I want to perform some of the operation in the parent, I write PID is greater than zero. That means it is the parent section. And what I am trying to do is, I want to write on the pipe, so the parent will write. And your pipe is having two end, two file descriptor. One is a reading file descriptor, so fd0, index 0 is the reading end, and index 1 is the writing end. Okay. So if I only want to write, I will close the reading end. So here what I am doing is close pipe fd0, because this is the read end of the pipe zero index considered as read end and one index considered as write end okay now let's say print process is printing something on the pipe so what exactly we want to write for writing we are using write system call and with the help of write 
uh, here I am passing the file descriptor pipe fd1 that is the writing end of the pipe and here we are writing hello comma child process okay you can pass it is 25 or any other thing it depends upon how many character you want to write so that that depends okay so we are writing 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 we can pass here 22 also it will work fine you can give even larger value also that's not a problem now what is happening here once you write it once you write it that data will be written on the pipe now another process can start reading from the same pipe from index value 0 okay so let's look at the child code inside the child we start reading so because we want to read only we will close the right end of the pipe so we are closing here pipe fd1 that is the writing end of the pipe so we close this particular file descriptor and then let's say we are printing here child process reading from pipe now because uh, 25 characters i have written here or 22 character right then we are reading the same number of characters here and we are passing the file descriptor of reading end of the pipe so that is pipe fd0 and this is the buffer where i am storing the contained or data which i am reading from the pipe Okay, and these many characters I am trying to read. Then we are printing the child process received and what the child process has received that is stored in buffer. So this buffer we are printing as string. Okay, and that message will be printed and later on we can close the file descriptor. This zero file descriptor or you can say reading end also. So I hope this code is very easy to understand. Let me execute this and again we will discuss few things and then I will close this. So let's compile this particular program by using GCC we can compile it. There is not a problem. Then we can run a.out file. So if we run it, let's see the parent process is writing to pipe. The parent is writing. The child process is reading from pipe. The child process received hello, comma, child process. So whatever has been written by the parent process on the pipe file, the child is able to read that particular data. So that means the communication has been established and that is one of the simple and easy example of inter-process communication. So I am just opening the code. I am providing this code in the uh, description so you can check it this is the fundamental of unnamed pipe okay so please go through it you will be easily able to understand it so I am just closing this session okay see you in the next class thank you everybody for connecting